on this episode of the Infinite Art Hunt. At Cecil B. Moore Library, you'll see their printmaking exhibit and meet my friend Rod Jones. Rod Jones is an artist who works with all types of materials, including printmaking. Rod uses his art to raise awareness of community issues. With art, he can draw attention to a problem or issue that needs help. So what are you up to today? Well, today we're doing a project for the community. This is a different printmaking technique called screen printing. Wait, we're playing with ink in a library? Lead support for this program has been provided by the William Penn Foundation with additional support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Sidewater Family Foundation, the Thomas Locke Charitable Fund, and viewers like you. Hello, art hunters, and welcome to the Infinite Art Hunt. This summer, I'm tracking down every single piece of art in Philadelphia. Well, every piece of art less than 30 minutes away from my house so that I can be home before my dad sneaks cauliflower in my mac and cheese. Fool me once. Today's topic is print making. We're starting at the Cecil B. Moore Free Library, where they have a super secret printmaking collection. It's not a secret. It was a secret to me, Ty. We're stopping all the presses, or starting all the presses. We're learning the ins and outs of the printmaking world. And they've got a community event going on that we're gonna be able to help. Learning new art and helping out with a new project? What could be better? Ty will be meeting Hildegard at the library without you if you don't hurry up. Let the art hunt begin. Print edition. It's the Infinite Art Hunt! Hey guys, over here! We're on another adventure with Fred. Looking for art and making friends. Checking in with Grandma Tilly. The adventure never ends. We're gonna go to real places, find magic and wonder, and try new things and see what we can discover. There's art everywhere, and I really want to explore. It's in the food that we eat, in the trees, in the forest. It's the Infinite Art Hunt! Are you grumpy? Did somebody swap out your watercolor lids? Did I swap out your watercolor lids? Because it definitely wasn't me. I'm grumpy because I can't get this gunk off my shoe. My sneaker art is ruined. Did you walk through that gunk lot, the sort of park next to my house? Yeah. Not a good move. It swallowed my lunch. Uh, is that what that smell is? It's supposed to be a peanut butter and jelly, but now it kind of smells like Grandma Tilly's tuna surprise and a Band-Aid. Could be good, though. Okay, no, first, that lunch cannot be saved. And second, most parks don't have Band-Aid slash tuna smelling gunk. What we're dealing with is an abandoned lot. Abandoned who's it? An abandoned lot, a small area of land that is usually uncared for, so people illegally leave their trash there. And poor, innocent footwear has to pay the price. So people are leaving trash there? Kind of like a reverse thief? That's diabolical. My sneaker art is ruined. Well, maybe a printmaking art hunt will make you feel better. Grandma Tilly's supposed to leave a message, any... <laughs> Hi, Freddy and Ty. I was just getting ready to do some body printing. All you need is a trampoline, a big sheet of paper, and a lot of paint. <laughs> I'm excited for your first printmaking adventure. I was thinking about the long tradition of using printmaking to bring important messages to the public. Art and words together are a powerful combination. 
the right message at the right time can change the world or your dinner plans. <laughs> at Cecil B. Moore Library, you'll see their printmaking exhibit and meet my friend Rod Jones. Rod Jones is an artist who works with all types of materials, including printmaking. Rod uses his art to raise awareness of community issues. With art, he can draw attention to a problem or issue that needs help. <laughs> Rod and I met while bird watching. Great artist. Terrible Robin call. <laughs> you should take Hildegard and help him out with his new project. Have fun. And let me know what you think of Doc's thrash. Rod sounds pretty cool, but what's a Doxish? No clue. There's only one way to find out. We get Hildegard and let's meet Rod. To the art hunt. Hey, Freddie and Ty, I'm Rod. I wanted to show you all the Intaglio press. I'm not gonna be able to bring this to the library, but this is a press that Doc Thrash used. Um, I thought it'd be cool to show you all what I do with it. What we have right now here is a copper plate that I engraved a design into using this dry point needle. And which you can see the lines right now because I already inked it, um, but we're gonna ink it again to run another proof. Um, and once after we ink it, we're gonna grab our paper, uh, place the paper on top, run it through the press we have over there, and see how it goes. I'm placing the copper plate onto our newsprint sandwich. Uh, you can see the newsprint is uh, the base for the copper plate, so we're setting the copper plate down so that then we can press the paper, the paper on top of it. Got our paper soaking because if it wasn't soaking, uh, our prints probably wouldn't come out as saturated as they need to. Um, so what the water does is open up the pores of the paper, loosen the fibers of the paper so that it's more um, ready to receive the ink that we're about to print onto it. Sandwich it into the towel, take our roller. Go over it a few times. I'm pretty sure we're covering the paper. Don't want to take too much out though. Still want it to be pretty damp. Expose it. I think that's a good, that's a good sign right there. Uh, we're gonna center it the best we can. Eyeballing it. I printed this plate a few times, so I kind of have a good idea of where the paper needs to be in reference to. The plate just flattened out our press blankets. This is what's allowing the ink that we just put on the plate to transfer to the paper. Um, if these blankets were not here, it would be this metal cylinder up against the paper, up against the metal copper, which would be a disaster. What we're gonna do right now is run our etching plate through this hydraulic press. The hydraulic is inside this case right here. Um, not all presses are hydraulic presses. Some presses have a large wheel that you crank. That is the hydraulic force. But this one is a little bit easier because it does all of the hard work for you. Running the, the plate through the press, nice little sound, let us know that our plate made it through. We're gonna move our blankets, pull them all the way back, make sure our sandwich has passed completely through. We have passed through. We're gonna make it a little bit easier for ourselves to pull this paper off. We're gonna pull it to the edge. Take off that first half. We got good impression. So this is looking good so far. We can see this kind of raised edge of the plane. I think that's a good sign. Peel the paper off really nice and slowly. That's a beautiful print. Cool, right? Now, in the library, we're going to do a bit different printmaking process, um, but we are going to get our hands dirty, and I think it'll be fun. 
Uh, I can't wait to see y'all and Hildegard when we get to the library. Hey, y'all. Hey, I'm Freddie, this is Ty, and this is Hildegard. Grandma Tilly sent us to help out today. Ah, Grandma Tilly, the good bird caller, I remember. So, what are you up to today? Well, today we're doing a project for the community. This is a different printmaking technique called screen printing. Wait, we're playing with ink? In a library? I like your style, Rod. Oh, I can only assume that you have full body protective gear, you know, to protect one's delicate fibers of couture, <laughs> yes? Well, maybe you can do something a little less messy with our head librarian, Eric. Oh, perfecto. Ty and I don't mind getting our hands messy. My shoes are a lost cause anyway. Well, let me show you. Cool, so this set up here. Um, before, actually before the screen had anything on it, it was a, a blank screen that I coated this, that I coated with this green stuff. And then I printed out that design and put it in an exposure unit. And that's how the design ended up on the screen. Oh. And so now we wash it out and I think we're ready to print. So we're gonna see how some of these prints go. Um, and we print by pushing this ink that I'm going to put on the screen through it. Um, because what the exposure unit does is burn these holes into that green film that you saw. And so hopefully those holes are cleaned out and we pull up, pull out some good prints. So nice firm pressure all in front of the ink. Nice and slow, firm down. And you know you got like a good print when you don't see almost like any of the shiny acrylic on the design anymore. And once you get past the image, go ahead and tap it off. Set it to the side like so. Pull up the screen. Yes, and you can put the, put the tape right there. Whoa. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, this one actually turned out really good. Great. Good job. Yes. Simple. And then once you, after you get done pulling the screen down, take this ink and just push it back. Push it back down the screen. All right, go ahead, grab yourself a sheet of paper. You got this, Ty. Looks simple enough. And I'll leave this going squeegee right there. So we put the white under. Yep. Line it up nice, yeah. nice and lined up. up. Put that down. Set that down. We can just use that gunk right here. Yep, okay. yep, perfect. Firm placement. All right. Nice and slow, yeah, that's gonna be nice. Oh, that's a good one, Ty. Tap it off. Tap it out. To the side, perfect. Mm -hmm. Pull this paper off, and there you go. Nice. Perfection. That's awesome. Perfection. Good job. It looks so good. <laughs> okay, oh, I can do this. We're making prints. Nice registration. Okay. Set that, maybe move that. Yep, perfect. Lay it down, hand you the screen. Hold. Nice firm pressure. Slow and steady. Nice. Oh, that's gonna look good too. Nice. All right. Nice little tap, tap it off a little bit. Tap, tap. Raise it up. Perfect. Nice. Perfect. Wait, what is this poster? Rod, what is Doc's Thrash? Is it big? It sounds big. Well, let me show you Doc's Thrash. Librarian Eric, I am here to help. Oh, great. We could really use a duster. Oh, that's 
perfect. There won't be an ounce of dust left in any nook, cranny, or book when I'm through. Well, I think we have the books covered, but the climbing wall could really use a dusting. The climbing wall? What kind of library is this? A fun one, but if you don't want to help with the dusting, we've got screen printing up front. Oh, that's a difficult, difficult decision, Monsieur Librarian. The wall is fearsome. The outfit, it's vintage. I choose the wall. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is an art exhibit dedicated to the revolutionary American printmaker, Doc Thrash. Secret art exhibit? I almost forgot. Doc Strash was a black printmaker who lived in the Sarswood section in Philadelphia probably about 100 years ago. He used his art to share images from his hometown of Griffith, Georgia and portraits of his friends in Philadelphia. But when Doc Strash wasn't happy with the way printmaking showed tones of black and brown skin, he invented a whole new printmaking technique. Now, his work is some of the best surviving artwork featuring everyday black people during that time. So he invented a whole new printmaking process? Doc Strash, very cool guy, and a very cool name. Seems like something you would only say when you're doing something awesome. Doc Strash. This is the house that he lived in 100 years ago. Uh, this is the lot we're trying to save. Uh, I think it's a little too late to save that house, Rod. Did he have another house? This is the one, and we're gonna remake it just like Doc's did. It could be a community space for gardening, art lessons, or whatever the community neighborhood needs it to be. You know, my community could use something like that. You could have a place like that if you fixed the gunk lot. You think I could clean the whole lot by myself? I can see it in my mind. Doc's thrash, it's beautiful, but I can't clean the whole thing on my own. Well, you have your community to help you. Uh, Uncle Mars, Hildegard, and me. We'll all help. Really? Sure thing. That lot has claimed the lunch and the shoe. Enough is enough. You're right. If Doc Thrash could change his community even before the internet, then I can clean up the gunk lot. We've got to get a plan. Where's Hildegard? Hey, Freddie, I hear you're learning about printmaking today. So we're gonna do some of our own printmaking with found objects, which are basically just stuff you find around your house. We have all kinds of things here. Celery hearts, Legos, trucks that we can drive across. And I think I wanna start with this toilet paper roll. So toilet paper rolls are really fun to print with. So I'm gonna start by just dipping this toilet paper roll in this blue paint and let's make a circle. Let's keep going. This would be kind of a cool way to make wrapping paper, something you can kind of make over and over and over again. I like starting with primary colors. I'm gonna flip it so that I don't mix. I like starting with primary colors since when they blend, you can kind of see how when the yellow and the blue overlap, they make green. I wonder what would happen if I take my toilet paper roll and try to smush it into a new shape. Could I make this into a triangle shape? I like seeing all the different ways you can use one material in many different ways. 
I wonder what would happen if I drag it. That's pretty cool. Kind of makes some cool swirls. I have some leftover celery here. The celery hearts, you don't, you don't usually eat the bottom of the celery. And celery hearts are pretty cool. And here's some extra leftover because when they kind of nest together like this, they kind of make a flower shape. One of the things with printmaking is you're never quite sure what you're gonna get when you actually print with it. So we'll see if this works. And I'm gonna try to do maybe two colors together. So we got some purple and some red. Let's see, let's see how this looks. Hmm, I don't love the way that looks, but let's see if we print it again. If we spread this apart a little bit, maybe it'll help us get that shape. Kind of looks like a flower garden. And I noticed that I actually prefer the second print that it makes. Some artists think call this a ghost print. It's kind of the leftover print from the first one. All right, so this, this isn't really a print, but it kind of reminds me of the screen printing process, and it's another cool way to use found objects in paint. I'm gonna put, let's see, I have this piece of cardboard here. I'm gonna put some blobs of paint at the top of my paper. This is so much fun experimenting, and it's all about chance and seeing how it goes. So we're gonna take the paint with this piece of cardboard and drag it down and see what happens. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna just keep doing it. This might mess it up, but I kinda wanna see what happens if I just keep scraping different directions. That might be my favorite one so far. I have, I don't even know what this is. It looks like a thimble. I don't know where I got it. It's a piece of wood. Let's do, since we're doing a circle theme, I have these building bricks. And that is how you print with found objects. Have fun printing, Freddie. Team Clean Community Meeting Check-In. Hildegard, any updates? Well, I reached out to the local government and they have confirmed that we have permission to clean the lot. You need to get permission to clean a lot? What a world. Ty, any updates? I reached out to my friend Derek. Once he heard about the tragedy of my lost shoe art, he's agreed to help donate some supplies for the cleanup. That sounds amazing. Now we just need to raise awareness. And since Hildegard helped me with the found object hunt, I made these amazing posters. Uh, that doesn't seem to have enough information. So I made this poster. Yeah, that still doesn't have enough information. So I also made this poster. Posters can be tricky. I think they're excellent, Freddy. I, I think it's just enough to galvanize your neighbors. You think they're gonna be mad? Uh, she means that they'll be excited to help. Wh which is what I said. Okay, I think now is a perfect time for our studio community to agree that we now need an individual cleanup for your cleanup making posters. That sounds great, but I've gotta go raise awareness. Clean, clean community meeting over. Thanks guys, gotta go. Okay, all I know is that she better be back before this paint turns to gunk. That's all I'm saying.
amigos, so much has happened. First, we learned everything about printmaking. Well, mostly everything. You can use big machines or normal things in your house. We learned about Doc's Thrash, who used his voice to support his community and his art to share about the lives of black Americans. And Rod Jones showed us a super cool old-timey print press that Doc's Thrash would have used. And we learned about screen printing, which was a little messy and super fun. And I used everything I learned to make super awesome signs, and they totally went viral, which in my neighborhood means Miss Lola at the corner store told everybody. A lot of people didn't like the gunk lot, which is why everyone cleaned it up, and now we're turning it into a community garden. Ooh, or a water park. Still deciding. Anyway, we totally changed the world, all thanks to the power of art and working together. I think Doc's Thrash would be pretty proud of me. I'm pretty proud of myself, too. Until next time, Doc's Thrash. program has been provided by the William Penn Foundation with additional support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Sidewater Family Foundation, the Thomas Locke Charitable Fund, and viewers like you. Continue the fun at home with art projects, activities, and printables paired with the episode you just watched. Available at whyy.org slash The Infinite Art Hunt.